So now it's time to talk about uh, form of the deltoid muscle. Uh, form of the deltoid muscle begins with the clavicle and, uh, and this delto and pectoral triangle. Remember lecture about the bones of the, uh, the upper limb. We had the pectoralis major muscle and we have deltoid muscle. And in between those two muscles, there is this triangle. There is this always visible, like in this image you can see, it's always visible some kind of uh, depression underneath the clavicle. That's the most visible place of the clavicle. It's kind of like a bear in that place. And that's the place where the, basically we can say the deltoid muscle begins. Because it's, sometimes it's very confusing. You have deltoid muscle, then you have pectoralis muscle, and there's a lot of striations, a lot of like fibers. And you can't distinct where one ends and the other one begins because in, 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 in many mammals, there is no difference between uh, deltoid and pectoralis. It's all like a one muscle. So you see, there is this, uh, there is this triangle here underneath the clavicle. That's the place where the, where the deltoid muscle begins. And if you look at this place, you can clearly see this depression here. And then there is this uh, front head and it's covered by the middle head. An insertion is here. It means the elbow has been moved outwards. On this image, you can see. So there is this insertion into the humerus. The front head kind of goes underneath the, the outer or the middle head of the deltoid muscle. And then there is this shiny, uh, very sharp uh, reflection on the skin. And what is this? It is usually the, the head of the, of the humerus just poking onto the, to the muscle and creating this sharp reflection. And on a female, this reflection is more sharp. And the reason why on a female is sharper than on a male, because the thickness of the muscle is different. So you have female humerus and the deltoid muscle and the male humerus and the deltoid muscle. So basically this thickness of the muscle, it kind of softens out this, this uh, reflection. And as you can see here, number one is the lateral uh, end of the, of the clavicle. And then you have number two, bump created by head of the humerus. Number four, that's a bulk and thickness of the deltoid muscle. And number five, it is triceps muscle sticking out from the backside. And number three, it is trapezius muscle. And now let's look on the, the lateral head of the deltoid muscle. So you can see it's a huge part that covers the both the, the front and the backside. And then the front side is underneath, and the back side is, is also underneath the, the middle part of the deltoid muscle. And this deltoid muscle, actually, this middle part is most complicated of those three parts. It has, uh, it's not so smooth at the front part. The front part is very smooth. There is uh, just parallel fibers. If you look at the back side, there is more going on. But the most complicated is the middle part, because middle part uh, consists of like the multiple bellies of the muscle. So you can see there's a couple of them. Sometimes, uh, if the person is very muscular, create like very visible shapes. And if you look from the top, it's the same thing. And then there is these uh, three tendon triangles. So there is no like five or ten. In the middle head of the deltoid muscle, there's always three triangles. They can be very undistinct, they can be very pronounced. And it all depends on how a person is trained. So you have this tendon triangle, this tendon, tendon is intersection, then you have muscle. If the person is not very trained, it's quite shallow. But if the person is trained, the muscle gets larger, but the tendon stays in the same place. So it creates the, like these deepenings. And uh, actually, these three tendons is a part of the five tendonese bands of the middle uh, head of the deltoid muscle. From each side, there is one band and then three bands in the middle. 
and why there is such things as these three tendonies bands. Those individual tendonies bands are the armature where the muscle is built around. So basically, the arms, the upper limbs, are not only the, the supporting limbs, but also the carrying limbs. So in, uh, in the primates, if you compare the primates with the other animals, the primates are uh, not only walking on, on, on the limbs, but they're also carrying things. So basically, there's a lot of weight need to be carried by, by the upper limbs, by, by, your, by your hands. And all that weight basically hangs on the deltoid muscle and on the shoulder muscle group. And these uh, tendonies bands, they actually are a part of this supporting structure. Very strong strings integrated inside into the deltoid muscle. And finally, the back part of the deltoid muscle is actually also created from um, uh, two different uh, elements. Quite wide and uh, flat tendonies part and more rounded uh, muscle part. And sometimes it's not only one rounded part. As you can see here, it's quite it's like one. But you can see there is another little part here. And the reason is because sometimes it is two or more bellies of the muscle. But this tendon part, the flat part, is always there. And as you can see, it, it's almost one third of the whole uh, of the whole back part of the deltoid muscle. And therefore, because of this thing. The deltoid, uh, from the back side, if you look, it seems way smaller than from the front. From the front is much bigger than from the back. So as you can see here, the deltoid muscle part looks quite small. Even though by this line, this shadow, you can see that's the actual place. Because that's like the trig trigonum of the spine, scapula. So basically, this muscle has to be connected somewhere over here. So the muscle is bigger, but the muscle part is smaller. In this case, the arms are also located forward. The scapulae are protracted, so therefore they are moved away from the, uh, the central ax. So it also gives this um, uh, small shoulder uh, impression. And now it's time to talk about dynamic changes of the form of the deltoid muscle. There is a very interesting thing. Uh, about like the deltoid muscle when you're uh, abducting your arm or lifting your arm like in this case the deltoid muscle kind of disappears so if you look from the front and the arm is fully abducted or lifted up you almost can't see the the deltoid muscle it kind of rotates backwards the same thing happens with uh, with this with the, with the clavicle so when your arms are in the rest you see the whole clavicle and by abducting your arm or lifting it up Clavicle disappears, but if you look from the back, deltoid muscle become larger and kind of start facing you uh, by rotating backwards. So in this case, you can see the acromion process uh, kind of uh, start facing you because the scapula rotates away. The, 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 angle, the inferior angle of the scapula rotates away from you. And a similar thing happens with the shoulder flexion. Remember this movement uh, in the front side is a flexion, and if you move in the, in the opposite side is extension. So you can see the deltoid muscle kind of flattens out. In this case, the front part of the front belly of the deltoid muscle gets activated, and the rest is kind of not so active anymore, and it becomes flat. And start facing you. If you look, if you look from from the back side, you can see it more, and you can see the the dotted muscle. If you look from the front, and now it's time to see some three D models. Here is the model of the of the human. It's a real scan from the real action. Actually, from the real human, it's a photogrammetry scan. And I just added some bones, like clavicle here. And, uh, and the scapula to the picture, and also some, some muscles. So what do we can see? Here is the clavicle inside, and then there is the sacromion process here. It goes around the, the shoulder. Here you can see this is a, a chromium process still. This is the spine of the scapula. And then, and then there is a deltoid muscle here. 
the posterior uh, posterior head of the deltoid muscle. Then then there's a medial head of the deltoid muscle. Here you see this um, flat tendonese area. Uh, this is a, this is a infraspinatus muscle here. This whole big this line here that's a part of the trapezius muscle that's a tendonous part of the trapezius muscle here and there's a long head of the triceps entering the in between the teres major and teres minor and here you have this uh, insertion of the of the deltoid muscle into the to the humerus and now it's time to see some movement so now uh, it's partly abducted uh, the the arm and this is a fully abducted arm as you can see partly abducted you can still see some deltoid muscle from the front and the fully abducted you barely can see just a little slice of the deltoid muscle and that's it um, and if you look from the back the whole muscle just turned back and and you can see the mm, this um, acromion process start facing you uh, sucks facing facing back as as you as you lift your uh, arm so in this case it is it is flat so it's kind of like totally flat and if you look from the from the back side uh, you don't see almost a chromium process but by lifting your arm it's kind of it, it's kind of like uh, turning up the the scapula the angle of the scapula kind of rotates here, and uh, and uh, you can start to see the acromion process, and uh, you can fully see the medial uh, or the this middle part of the of the deltoid process, the deltoid deltoid muscle. You can see it facing backwards, and the front part you can see from the back. But if you look from the top, you can see there is another thing which I want wanted to mention, you, is uh, the clavicle, which kind of like um, gets squeezed in between the trapezius muscle and uh, the pectoralis major muscle and also deltoid muscle. So you don't see the clavicle anymore. But in case if the partly and the partly uh, abducted uh, upper limb, you can still see uh, the the clavicle pretty much. But uh, as you lift your arm up, it kind of gets squeezed inside. 